Okay, I'm looking over the problem set, and um, you know what? Let me do one problem at a time. I'm going to go to the key, and I'm going to walk you through that, all right? So the first question is just print the right triangle is 60. What I would do here is I would definitely draw a picture of a right triangle, and the tri right triangle might look something like this over here. And what I would probably say is I just label the sides as A, you know, kind of traditionally A, B, and C. And the, the given that I know, I know that A plus B plus C is equal to 60. But they also told me the altitude to the hypotenuse is 12. And what does that mean? It means there's a line drawn here that's perpendicular to C, and this side has length 12. All right? So I'm going to say, you know, lo looking at it, you know, I'm looking at, I'm going to say an angle over here. I don't know what that angle is, by the way. But I do know, looking at a particular example of a three-sided figure over here. I'll just put this one over here, by the way. And I'm just talking about that angle over there. So I see that triangle there. So I'm going to say that for that angle, it's got a ratio, the opposite of the hypotenuse. Let me write this over here. Opposite over the hypotenuse for that red triangle is going to be 12 over A. But you know, if I look at another triangle, look at this one over here, same angle by the way. I'm going to say you could also write down that that would be B over C. Now that gives me a couple different relationships right now. That I got the first relationship down. Let me put on what I mean by that. I got this relay as a given. They gave me that altitude business over there, and I got this down. I'll write down what I mean by that. I know that 12 over A equals B over C. And I'm going to just kind of clear this out. This is 12C equals AB. I'll write that down for you. So 12C equals AB. This is all information I know. Let me kind of get rid of my picture. I don't need the picture anymore. That would just help me get the ratios. All right. I think there's another relationship for um, the triangle, right? Maybe I should put that diagram down again. I did A, B, C, right? What's the other relationship I know for right triangles? A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, right? I know that. All right, let me, um, I got three relationships down now. I got this one, you know, the A plus B plus C equals 60, and this one over here. Let me get my eraser out. I think I'm done with all of that business over there. All right, I got these three relationships down. Now, the question is, there's three equations, three unknowns. What they want me to do is find the sides, all right? So I got I to gotta work on these things. And what I'm going to do over here is, and again, I'll look at the blue area in a second, but I'm going to write down the first equation as A plus B is equal to 60 minus C. And I'm going to square both sides because I see another relationship that has squares in it. So you would get, if I squared both sides, what would you get? You would get a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. That's the left side squared. And the right side squared is going to be 60 squared minus 120c plus c squared. Well, what's nice about this, there are things that, no, there's nothing that disappears. Wait a second, there is. What's a squared plus b squared? It's c squared. Let me write that down for you. So it's the same thing as saying c squared plus 2ab equals 60 squared minus 120c plus c squared. All right? Now, I noticed immediately that the c squareds disappear. And 2ab is actually just 24 c's. So I'm using these two equations, right, to get rid of things. And again, 24 c's is 2 AB, two ABs, right? Yeah. What do you get over here? Uh, let's write this down. 60 squared minus 120c. I think I'm going to get c now. So 144c equals 60 squared. So c will be 60 times 60. And 144 is 12 times 12. So now I know c is 5 times 5. So c is 25. So I'm pretty comfortable I know what C is. All right, C is, C is, C is 25. 
All right. So let's see what we're going to do next then. And going next, let me just scroll this up. I got the CS20. Oh, you know, I don't want to scroll up. I got the, I got the stuff right over here. So then the question becomes is, what are you going to do now to get the other sides? And I'm going to write this down again. I'm going to write down A plus B is equal to 60 minus C. So A plus B is the same thing as 60 minus 25. So A plus B, 60 minus 25 is going to be 35, right? All right, so what are you going to do now? Well, I guess I'm going to use another relationship, right? What's the other? I got 12C equals AB, and C is 25, right? So 12 times 25 equals AB. Now, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what A and B is at this point. Let's see, that's 300 equals AB. Well, I got this equation now and this equation. It's two equations, two unknowns. I'll make a substitution in, all right? Let's see if I can do that. So A plus, well, over here, B would equal 300 over, over A, right? So I'll put this on 300 over A, and that equals 35, right? So now I got an equation one unknown. I'm going to multiply both sides by A. So you get A squared plus 300 equals 35A. So A squared minus 35A plus 300 is equal to 0. A, A, I'm using the uh, zero product rule. I'm going to say it looks like 20 and 15 minus minus. I gotta be careful now, don't I? So I got A could be 15, or the A could be 20. All right. Let me go back. Well, that makes sense. Looking at this over here, if A was 15, what would B be? B would be 20. Whoops, sorry about that. The B would be 20. And if A is 20, the B would be 15. All right, that makes, certainly makes sense. So, uh, again, I want to understand what the question is. Find the sides of the triangle. Well, the sides would be, remember I got C, right? C was 25. Now, whether I choose this pair or this pair, I'm still getting the same sides, and these are the legs. It would be 20 and 15. So let me write them in order. So 15... 20, and 25. All right? We're getting those things over here. Let's go to number two. Now, number two says mathematician, blah, 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 lived his entire life in the 1800s. In the last year of life, he announced when I was X years old. So I'm going to say X years old. The year was um, X squared. So I'm going to write this down, and I'm going to say X is the number of years. Now, I'm going to start making a stab at it, but I know whatever what, when I square that number, it's got to be between, so x squared has got to be between 1800 and 1899. All right? So I'm looking at that. I'm going to say about 43. Let me see if that works. So 43 times 43. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. Let's see. 4 times 3 is 12. 16, 17, you get 9, 4, yeah, 18, 49. So the X would be 43. So he's 43 years old. And what's the year going to be? The year would be 1849. Now, what's the question? In what year was he born? Well, it's going to be 1849 minus 43, which can be 1806. Well, let's see how we did. Yep, 1806. Let me go to the next question. It's a law question. And, you know, certainly if I were doing this, I just, they're all base 10. I just simply rewrite it as log base 10, 2 to the A. The next one would be log base 10, 
3 to the b plus log, I'm trying to condense the log, by the way, base 10, 5 to the c, whoops, I didn't mean an equal sign there, I did that, and this got this plus log base 10, 7 to the d is 2017. I'm going to compress it, or condense, I should say, and that's going to be 2 to the 9th times 3, I'm sorry, that's not a 9, that's an A. Let me erase this over here. Sorry about that. That's why I like to type things. I don't make mistakes when I'm typing. It's when I write, I read things I can't write, read what I've written down. So it's 2 to the A times 3 to the B 5 to the C and 7 to the D is 2017. I'm going to write without the log now. And it's going to be 2 to the A, uh, 3 to the B, 5 to the C, and 7 to the D. And that's going to be 10 to the 2017. I want to tell you, though, that A, B, and C has got to be integers. This makes it a lot easier for me to look at the problem. And the reason for that, I'm really kind of looking for factors like 2, 3, 5, and 7. And the number 10 doesn't have any 3 and or 7 in it, but it does have a 2 and a 5 in it. So 2a, 3 to the b, 5 to the c, 7 to the d. And that's going to be 2 to the 2017 times 5 to the 2017. So what do I know? I know a now has got to be 2017. And I know the B um, has to be 0, because there's no 3s. The C must be 2017. There's 2017 factors of 5, but there's no factors of 7, so the D has to be 0. So what's their question? What do you do when you add all these numbers together? Well, you know, A plus B plus C plus D is just 2, 000, uh, uh, two times 2017 which is going to be 4,000, and 2 times 17 is 34. All right, not so bad. All right, number four, and I want to, I want to go back to the picture here. So if I were looking at this thing over here, you know, the one, one kind of reading it, and I'm looking to look at this picture over here, but I'll go back to the blue area in, in a moment. So it says three circles are radius two. So, you know, I, I, I'd be honest with you, I have a real tough time drawing pictures, but I'm going to say there's a radius here, and there's a radius here, all right? And there's a radius here, and then there's a radius here, and these are the centers, all right? And I'm kind of glad they gave me pictures. I have a tough time drawing pictures like this. But it says, you know, the given three circles, radius two... Uh, the tangent to each other is shown in the following diagram. They're kissing circles. What is the area of the shaded region? So let's take a look at this. And I know this is tough, but I want to look at it. Uh, be very careful. I want to do the area of this triangle, by the way. You say, what, why do I want to do that? Because once I do that, I can subtract away the areas that I don't want. So the area of this triangle over here, the area. Well, I'm not looking at it. There's many ways to do it, but I would like to know the lengths of those sides. And if the radius are 2, the lengths of all these sides are going to be 4. That's 4. This is 4. This is 4. So I want to just remind you that this is a triangle. It looks like this over here, 4, 4, 4. I definitely need to get the altitude of that. Now, what I do know, I know it's 60 degrees, right? So let me put that down for you. 60 degrees. This would be 2. This would be 4. And what's this side over here? Let me talk about it. Pythagorean theorem, right? I guess I could do, let's see, 16. This would be 4 plus, I don't know, I'll just call this h here, h squared. So that would be 12 equals h squared. And that would be what? h equals, let's see, that's 2 root 3s, right? So I'll write that down for you. And I'm pretty convinced of the height of it. So the area is going to be one half times 
times the base. Well, the base this guy is 4. And the height, remember, we just computed that, is going to be 2 root 3s. Well, what do you get over there? Let's see. You get 4 root 3s, right? Let me show sure I did that right. The base is 4. And the height of that is 2 root 3s. Yeah, I think I did okay. Now I got troubles now. And I'll tell you what the troubles are. I need to subtract away these things. And there's three of them to pull away. And all those things are just arcs. Where this angle over here is 60 degrees. So I need to know the area of that, you know, sector. And I hope you remember some of your trigonometry. But the area of that sector is going to be one-half theta r squared. All right, let's write this down, the area of that sector. One-half. Remember, the theta's got to be in radian. So I know it's 60 degrees, but it's going to be pi over 180 degrees would be pi over 3. All right. So, what's the R for that? Well, the R is 2. Right, so what do you get there? Let's see, you would get 2 pi, because 2 squared is 4, and divided by 2 is 2, over 3. But there's 3 of them, so what i got to do, minus, I'm taking away 3 of these guys, 3 times 2 pi over 3. So what do you get? 4 root 3 minus 2 pi. That's the area. All right, let's go back and see how I did. Number 4. I'm not beyond making mistakes. Yeah, 4 root 3 minus 2 pi. All right, let me remind you we did that. Yep, 4 root 3 minus 2 pi. Yeah, they were. By the way, they give you good pictures too, by the way. And I want to point out, you may want to look at the pictures that I'm giving you. It's up to you, though. A lot of people say these are very simple problems. A lot of people say they're very difficult problems. It varies from student to student. So what I want to do now, I'm going to go back to the blue area. You know, I don't have enough room. I will go to the blue area. So let's go, go to number five now. I think I've done all the questions. I have not done number five. So it says, suppose the function is even. I want to tell you what even means to me. The even means that g of x, whoops, that, that g of x, let me get my eraser out again, that g of x is identical to g of minus x. Well, let's write this down. So g of x is actually f of x plus x cubed. And what's g of minus x? It's f of minus x, right? And then I gotta I gotta do the um, the minus x over here, so it's gonna be minus x cubed. All right. Now they tell me something. They tell me this. Well, let's write this down. So I'm gonna say x here is minus ten. I'm going to plug this in. f of minus 10, again, x is minus 10. This would be minus 1,000 equals f of, well, let's see, minus minus 10 is 10, right? And this would be plus 1,000. Let me see if I did that right. Yeah, I think I did it right. And they say f of minus 10 is 2017. I'll write that down. Now, I don't know what f of 10 is, but they did say what it is. Huh? Try to figure that out. Whoops. So what do you get? 2017. I guess I subtract the 1,000 from both sides. That's minus 2,000 now equals f of 10. Well, that's not so bad. What do you get? 17 is f of 10. All right, let's see what they did. By the way, they give better pictures over here. And again, you may want to look at these pictures to see if they help you. They may not help you, though. All right, 
Yep, f of 10 is 17. That's what we wrote over there. Again, wasn't that bad to do. I read the, I read what they said. I wrote down what they said, and things flowed together pretty nicely. All right, and they, they're getting the same answer, which is good news. All right, now, granted, I, I want to emphasize again that the document that you're looking at, if you are looking at this video, by the way, um, the document that you're looking at is being made available to the participants in the Prison Mathematics Project only. All right, now it's a long document. There's over 300 pages. Um, it hasn't been really thoroughly proofed out yet, but uh, these are you know, it's a collection of problems I've taken over the years and just and sharing them with the uh, Prison Mathematics Project participants for them to work on the problems too. So what are they seeing? They're basically seeing the questions, right, as we see the questions, and then, of course, the solution they'll see a later time after they attempt to do the problems on their own, something you should be doing too. Now, granted, I realize some students may be interested in getting uh, access to this document. Again, it's not published yet, but what you can do is you can reach out to me. And, and, I'll, and ask me when it's going to be published. My email address is Bannon. And you're more than welcome to reach out to me. Now, what I mean by that, if I'm not overly um, inundated with emails, which I'm unlikely, um, I'll try to get back to you. you know, I'll, I'll let you know when the document's going to be available and how to get it, all right? But also, you could, you could also reach out to me and tell me that you got a better way of doing something or you have a question and as long as I'm not overwhelmed, I'll try to answer you. If I'm overwhelmed with you, don't um, you know think I'm being rude. I just can't get I can't get to everybody, and I'll try to do my best. All right, but again, I really appreciate you trying these problems. I really appreciate you listening, and uh, keep going forward. All right, thank you.